Okay, so we're right at 6 o'clock on the dot. Hopefully we'll get a few more people filter in, but um, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, kind of exciting evening. Um, I want to start off by saying thank you to our two candidates for uh, being up here tonight. Obviously, thank you to our city staff and our uh, PD for being here as well, um, giving up their evening time. And then most especially, thank you for our friends from Community Impact for uh, putting this on. So we have Jason is out in the audience. Uh, we have Andrew and Vanessa. And I'm going to let them go over all of the different rules and how this thing is going to work uh, and, and the time frame and all of that. But um, this should be a great evening. So once again, thanks, everybody, for coming. Oh, by the way, this will be taped, and it will be posted online later. So it's not live, but you will be able to access it later. So if you want to direct a friend or a neighbor to it, uh, it will be available. So thanks again, everybody. Good seeing you. Y'all want to go ahead? Andrew, Vanessa? Is this... Uh can you hear me? Great. My name is Vanessa Holt. I'm the editor for Community Impact Newspaper in the Woodlands, which includes Shenandoah and Oak Ridge North. And uh, Andrew is our reporter who uh, covers Shenandoah meetings and other events in the area. And we're very pleased to be here today for this forum. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and read the, uh, the rules for the evening. And I'll be the timekeeper. Uh, we ask everyone to turn off all cell phones or set to vibrate, uh, both candidates and audience. No uh, no uh, cell phones on the candidate table. Candidates may have written notes only. All forum attendees will be seated. Only staff will be standing. No comments will be made from forum attendees in the audience. Disruptions will be dealt with quickly by officers in attendance. And questions may be submitted to the moderator on note cards uh, provided at the forum. I think you may already have those. So feel free to uh, fill out any questions you have. And if we have time at the end, we will uh, address some additional questions. So the format for the forum. Uh, we'll have three minutes for each candidate for opening statements. And we'll progress to ask the questions. Each candidate will have two minutes to answer each question, and one minute will be provided for a rebuttal from the other candidate. Uh, the drawing order was Samuelson and Escado. At the end of the moderator question session, uh, we'll take a short break to look at audience questions, and we'll determine if there are any duplicates, and what, uh, if they're near or biased, or uh, what, if any other questions will be asked and then we'll have that session with the same rules. And then two minutes for closing statements at the end. Uh, so I'm going to keep time, and I will stand in the back and hold up a card when you have 30 seconds left, when you have 15 seconds left, and then I'll hold up a stop card when your time is up. Uh, so just keep an eye on me back there. So uh, I will let Andrew proceed from here with uh, the first question and I will move to the back with my signs. Thanks, everybody. Uh, just, just wondering, is on, or? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, let's just go ahead and get started with the opening statements. Uh, Mr. Samuelson, you're up first. Thank you. John Samuelson, I'm happy to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. Before I continue, I want to introduce my wonderful wife, Jennifer who is the most important thing in the world to me, and God has blessed me with her love. I've lived in the woodlands for 28 years, and I know a lot about the area and frequent in many places in Shenandoah as well. One and a half years ago, I decided to move to Shenandoah and made it an objective. Now we are here, and we love it here. I had a lot of management and financial experience that could add value to the residents of Shenandoah, the city, and the mayor. I had no axe to grind when I filed for the city council position. I wanted to see Shenandoah continue to be a wonderful place that it is to live, and that is why I volunteered my services. I knew I had the financial and management background to help in the future, especially with complex financial problems to keep our tax rate low and our services high, as well as provide a different perspective, a free management consultant to the city. I may have only been a resident for nine months, 
at this point, but I have learned a lot in those months by talking to knowledgeable people who have lived here for decades, including past officials, listening to or attending council meetings and planning and zoning meetings, reading and researching materials on the city website, driving most of the roads and streets in Shenandoah, meeting with a commissioner and learning about the roads, learning where the land is vacant and could be used for parks or development, reviewing maps, organization, charts, financials, and listening to the audit report given by the auditor to the mayor, city council, and staff. I was surprised and somewhat offended by John Escotto's public Facebook comment stating, now seven months into my residency, and I have no idea what's going on in the city, and is that enough for me to sit on the council? I think it is. I beg to differ with Mr. Escotto and others, as I stated earlier, I think I have the qualifications and the knowledge. They don't know what they don't know, and they don't know what I know. I believe both candidates are very qualified in different ways. Either of us would serve Shenandoah and its residents well, but I want the voters to decide, and I'll be happy with whatever outcome. It should be about the future and not the past. I ask for your vote, not only on current issues, but on my qualifications to solve future complex issues and provide financial oversight to the city of Shenandoah. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Escoto, it's uh, your turn for your opening statement. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you all uh, for being here. Thank you for moderating this, uh, this event. A thank you to, uh, to the former mayors, former council members, and fellow citizens for, for attending. Uh, my name is John Escado, and I'm a 10-year resident, 10-plus year resident of Shenandoah. Uh, I have been involved in activities here in Shenandoah, and forgive me for saying this, but I have don't recall seeing you in events that I have been involved in in the ten and a half years that, that, I, that I've been living here. Uh, citywide, organized by the city, or events, trash bashes, or Halloween uh, uh, events, or Christmas lights events, or even council meetings. I, I, maybe I didn't look around too, too well. But anyway, I am running for the seat, uh, for this uh, council seat, uh, with the full understanding that what the duties of the council member are. Uh, council members do not perform audits or, or, or uh, things like that. Uh, they are here to deliberate. They are here to cast votes and make decisions on what is best for the people of Shenandoah. And if elected, what I intend to do is to, is, is, is to follow one principle. And that's a principle, when, when things that, that come up before the panel, the council, is how will this benefit Shenandoah and its residents? That is my sole goal for, for this seat. Uh, we have a very competent staff that, uh, that manages our city's budget with great transparency and with great professionalism. Uh, I have yet to see or hear of any problems in our budget. I have yet to hear or see any mismanagement by, our, uh, by the city administration or by any of the council members. What I can bring to this position is a degree of professionalism, a, an ability to deliberate and to uh, involve myself in the consensus to determine a goal and to execute what that goal is. Uh, that is, that is my, my position and that is what the reason, why, one of the reasons why I'm running for this council. I love Shenandoah and I want what's best for Shenandoah. Thank you.
Mr. Samuelson, the first question is, do you have ideas for preparing Shenandoah for emergencies like those that it faced in recent years, such as flooding and severe weather? You have two minutes. Um, yes. <laughs> i got to find it now. But... Um, Okay, here, we'll just talk a little bit louder. Better? There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and repeat the question. It is, do you have ideas for preparing Shenandoah for emergencies like those it has faced in recent years, such as flooding and severe weather? Well, I don't have the answers to how to prevent flooding or severe weather, weather but I, I believe that what should be done is have an effective, consistent ways of communicating to the, to the residents especially the, the el elderly people who don't use Facebooks. There, there perhaps should be a phone number to call. Um, and we could, you could look into a phone alert system if, there wa if, if it hasn't been looked into before and consider that. But also have a phone number that people can c call to find out what's going on. Thank you. Mr. Escoto, do you uh, have ideas? Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, I do. Uh, in my career, I, I have been in positions where I have been uh, involved in panels uh, to, to develop and create a, what we call in the government a COOP plan, which is a continuation of operations plan, which involves, um, the, the text involves what the city, what every uh, critical uh, personnel, person within the government is to do during an emergency and what their specific duties are and what they are and, and there are also rules on how to take care of the of the of the, uh, of the residents it contains uh, things like uh, evacuation maps uh, uh, traffic control who is, is involved who's going to be involved in specific areas uh, like utilities, who is going to ensure that that uh, power lines and gas lines are secure or or are protected? Uh, so yes, I do have experience in a continuation of operations plan. Mr. Samuelson, you have one minute to rebuttal. Well, I agree with most of those things. I don't have the experience in it, but I wanted to say that. I don't know everything in the city. I don't have the experience, but I'm a fast learner. So if I was elected to city council, I would focus on those things and figure out what made the most sense to do. Thank you. Mr. Scotto, your rebuttal? Uh, I have none. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Samuelson, the next question is, how do you think the city should approach developing the remaining... Excuse me, can I ask a question? Do I always get the first question? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Oh, it's supposed to alternate. Okay, then. Oh. Mr. Escoto. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, how do you think the city should approach developing the remaining land in Shenandoah? We have uh, little land that's uh, to be developed, and, and, and it's, it's in areas that uh, are non-residential. Uh, we have about 35 or so acres of, of land that it's undeveloped. And uh, some of that land, you can't develop anything on it. Uh, about a little less than 10 acres of that is, is a land grant land that you can't develop on. Uh, the bulk of that, uh, or rather the balance of that land is in uh, a zone where there's, there's, there's a, you have to take consideration as to where, where that land exists in order to develop it. Uh, so uh, it would have to be determined what is going to be developed for what purpose, whether it's going to be, uh, 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 certainly in that area, there's no low density uh, a residential building or no medium. Uh, and in fact, I, I doubt that in that area there's even a high density development. So it would have to be something commercial or industrial or something in that vein. Thank you. Mr. Samuelson? As a city councilman, I would approach the remaining land sensibly and methodically, keeping the, 
city of Shenandoah as a desirable place to live and visit while maximizing sales tax revenues in commercial areas. That would be one of my top priority. With limited land remaining within the city limits, that also means promoting renovations and remodeling of existing residences so that the con city continues to be a desirable place to live. So making sure if somebody wants to remodel, they, they have the, the ability and the ease of following the proper rules and doing it. And if they happen to tear down their, want to tear down to rebuild, that they're able to do that without a lot of difficulty. Um, the other thing is, there's that plot of land on Wellman that at some day might be part of the city of Shenandoah. Uh, that's an area, there are, there are areas that are in the land trust that can be used for parks. And uh, then there's the, the dealing with the extra ter ter territorial annexation in whatever areas those may be. Mr. Escoto, you have one minute to rebuttal. Uh, I agree the, uh, the uh, extraterritorial jurisdiction zones are open. Uh, we can't do anything with that until we become a home rule city. Uh, I, I do agree that uh, once the, uh, the, the, the land that's presently on Wellman that uh, does not belong to the city, at some point, uh, uh, depending on the owner's uh, uh, wishes, whether they want to come into uh, the city, it will be developed to an extent, but it has, it has to abide by the zoning. And in, in, in this case, it's a residential zoning. Uh, so uh, uh, that's that's my my statement. Thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Samuelson. Uh, would you like to rebuttal? No, it's fine. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Samuelson, what areas of the city should more taxpayer dollars be spent? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question at this moment. Um, I think. I think there are areas like I think the city park has deteriorated. There's some safety issues there. Uh, it's overwatered. Um, I, I, I would like to see better patrolling of the city by the police department. Uh, there's areas of the of the budget for for bikes, uh, bike officers, um, uh, following school buses. I, I'm I don't know about the capital programs. I, I don't know them yet. I saw them last night. I'm not familiar with them, and I don't expect to be familiar with them. If I'm a councilman, I'll become familiar with them and figure out what makes the most sense. And as Mr. Escado said, the job is to, to analyze things and make appropriate decisions for the benefit of the city. Thank you. Mr. Escado? I think that... Uh, uh, a focus, uh, one of the main focus for taxpayer dollars should be the uh, uh, mainly improving the, uh, the uh, 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 traffic problems that we have. Uh, I think that that's money well spent. Uh, uh, I know for a fact that uh, the uh, uh, David Memorial Extension is in the works and it's probably going to come into fruition probably the beginning of next year, uh, I think that that's money well spent. Money well spent is going to be also the, uh, the improvement of the uh, intersection of uh, Tamina, uh, uh, Research, and I-45. That's money well spent, I think. Uh, also the improvement of our uh, infrastructure, uh, the, uh, the uh, sewage uh, lift stations, the, uh, the uh, uh, water plants, uh, Things of that nature. I think that that's where tax money should be uh, should be spent is better spent. Thank you, Mr. Samuelson. You have one minute for your rebuttal. I don't disagree with any of that, but I did want to chime in that I should have said something about the traffic because the traffic is horrible. Some people won't admit it, but it's horrible, and I'm sorry for being called negative, but it's horrible. And I've tried to do something about that. I've researched. I've communicated. And especially with the, the, 
the feeder road stuff all I can advise residents to do is use their GPS don't go anywhere near the 45 feeders Mr. Escoto at least while the COVID vaccine is going on I, I think that's I think that's what's created a lot of our uh, heartburn uh, in, in in those areas is is the establishment and then redirection of of the um, of the traffic to the uh, to the Wood Forest Stadium to get the vaccines. Once that resolved, I think that that's going to be one uh, less headache, and then we can focus on the uh, on the on the main issues, on the more permanent issues. Thank you, uh, Mr. Escoto. Do you have ideas for deterring criminal activity in the city? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I do. Uh, I think, for one thing, let me let me let me state this: that I've I've uh, talked with. With our police chief, I had a conversation with him, and I, I basically I wanted to know what his methods uh, are as far as uh, uh, public safety, uh, patrolling, uh, and, and um, I feel very comfortable in knowing that uh, the chief is executing a plan of action that uh, focuses on, on, the, on what has been recently the high crime areas uh, in the city, the areas where burglaries, as you know, back in March we had a, a rash of vehicle burglaries in hotel parking lots. There is a focus by the police department, by the chief and his troops, to focus on those areas in those specific times where crime is being uh, executed. I think that, uh, that focused uh, crime prevention is a good way to go as long as it doesn't impact the patrolling in, in the residential areas. Uh, and I, I have been assured by the chief that he is doing that, that he is conducting this focused patrolling without impeding the, the, patrol, the patrols in the neighborhoods. Thank you. Mr. Samuelson, your response? I don't know everything about the police department. I have tried to find out, quite frankly. They used to have areas of responsibility, and I've asked several times of the city administrator, do they still have areas of responsibility? What is the plan? What are they going to be doing? And the answer, in my opinion, was it's in a state of change. So I do not know what the current things are. I didn't interview the current police, police chief. I asked the city administrator for some of that information and I didn't get it. I think there should be areas of responsibility. I think there, sh there, there might not be enough money in the, in the budget right now. There should be officers on bikes perhaps for the benefit of the kids. There should be officers patrolling areas. I know darn well from listening to people that Patrol cars used to be seen on the streets in areas. They're not seen on the streets in, in, anymore. Um, I had one other point about that. How much time do I have left? Huh? Oh, plenty of time. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, when the, they, they could be looking for things that might need to be taken care of and reporting it to other people, um, and they They've been observed in a lot of other areas, like down on sawdust, and I don't. I, w I would suggest that it wasn't to respond to crimes. I don't know why they're there, but they should be in in Shenandoah, primarily. That's my opinion. That's my level of knowledge. That's my response. Mr. Escoto, you have one minute for your rebuttal. Hey, uh, I wanted to add on uh, on that is that. Uh, uh, I, I also have heard those uh, reports that that patrolmen or police cars have been seen outside of the city limit, city limits, and uh, I do understand that uh, the uh, the PD has a reciprocal agreement with Montgomery County, uh, the Woodlands, specifically the Woodlands district, to cover uh, policing in some of those areas, designated areas in the Woodlands. And the, the, the reciprocity of that is, is we get fire protection. As you know, we don't have a fire department here. We get, uh, we're serviced by, by, the, uh, by the Woodlands Fire Department. And uh, that's part of the reciprocal agreement, among other things. But uh, some of the reasons 
that you might see police cars outside of the city limits is that. In the daytime, they could be running an errand, picking up something in some other part of the city. There could be an explanation, but it takes interviewing the police. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Samuelson, your rebuttal. Well, I believe some of those last statements about reciprocal agreements are out of out of date. Um, they no longer. unaware of the other reciprocal agreements I was aware of the one of doing them all and that's no longer on a, in existence mr. Samuelson the next question is what do you feel are the most important issues facing Shenandoah in 2021 and beyond well I believe keeping Shenandoah as a desirable city in which to live by protecting our low tax rate by maximizing sales tax revenue, which is going to be difficult and it's going to take some some improving code enforcement, improving resident safety and crime reduction, improving mobility and traffic, protecting our roadways to not become major thoroughfares for others like they are becoming down Vision Park Boulevard, down Grogan's Mill Road, making sure that, that the Woodlands isn't using our community as a way of getting to the Woodlands because it's affecting us and our residents. Um, and approaching the remaining land sensibly, like I said before, and uh, promoting reno renovations. Financial responsibility is important. I won't go into all of that. You know, making sure we're spending prudently, looking into budget variances, and emergency preparedness that we've already talked about. Mr. Escoto? <clears throat> uh, I agree with uh, 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 most of the uh, items that uh, Mr. Samuelson has, uh, has uh, uh, stated. Uh, I look forward to uh, to helping the city, if elected, in making those decisions that are going to be benefit the city. I don't have specific plans because it those plans will will uh, will develop as necessity dictates. Uh, but uh, I do feel that uh, mobility is an issue. Uh, I don't think that we have. A great deal of of say on how Grogan's Mill is is going to be used. Uh, for one, the road is a is a, a county road. Uh, we have limited uh, power there. Uh, the only reason that that we're keeping uh, Grogan's Mill from becoming a four lane road is because Shenandoah owns about a sixty foot strip of land that prevents the county from making that a four-lane road. And in the past, a, a, uh, a four-lane road was pushed by a former administration that would carry it all the way and even across uh, 45 to the end. Now, that would have been a nightmare. You talk about now uh, vehicles moving up and down Grogan's Mill to get to 45 and back. Can you imagine what that would have been had that four-lane highway be, uh, come to fruition, okay? Uh, so uh, m making those studies and, and, and deliberating about those type of projects is what I'm looking forward to because I want what's best for Shenandoah. And I don't think that... that uh, Thank you. Okay. Mr. Samuelson, your rebuttal. Well, I don't totally agree that we can't do anything about it. Um, I've, I've met with Commissioner, is it Charlie Riley, to learn about, about the, the roads. And, and the city of Shenandoah has an obligation to try to influence other people to do things. And I think the commissioner can be influenced about things. I talked to him about specifically some improvement and signage on the feeder roads to research that 
coming down the feeder road and he said oh I wasn't aware of that that sounds like a good idea and even though the feeder roads are not his he has influence on the Depart on the Texas Department of Transportation and he thinks that he can get those ideas done thank you mr. Escoto your rebuttal uh, uh, I have no rebuttal I just want to add something if I may you may uh, as far as improvement I want to I want to make sure that 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 the uh, uh, the situation with the uh, with uh, with energy is always uh, monitored. I want to make sure that that uh, electricity to our residents is is continuous, that it's dependable. Uh, unlike in the past, I know many of us suffered here with uh, uh, countless outages uh, due to poor. Uh, equipment, poor transformers, poor uh, whatever. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, with a lot of prodding, uh, the Wellman Loop uh, was was uh, came on, uh, online uh, uh, a couple of months ago, and now, thankfully, we won't have to suffer at least as many outages as we did in the past. And the Valley will also benefit from it because that will also back up electricity to them. Thank you. Mr. Escoto, what do you feel Shenandoah does well? Well, one of the best things they do is uh, keep our, our, our property taxes down. Uh, our, uh, our water fees are the lowest in the county. I think, I think that's, that's, that's a great thing. That's a great benefit to our residents. Uh, the quality of life here uh, in Shenandoah, I feel, is it's it's one of the best. That's why people are so interested in in coming to Sh coming to Shenandoah. Uh, just today, I got something on Facebook that. Uh uh, uh, my my house, that uh, there are plenty of people waiting in line to to buy. So I think there's something that we're doing right here in Shenandoah because a lot of people are wanting to move here. I think the uh, I think the, the the state of the city is is being handled right by the by the council and the mayor and the uh, administration here. Thank you, Mr. Samuelson. Well, I I think that the mayor and the council and the staff are doing a lot of things right. I, I'm a lot of things right. I think there are some problems, and they ought to be addressed. But they're doing most things right. Uh, and overall, they're probably doing a lot of things right, okay? Um, I think the civic events that they do, the mayor loves the civic events, and, and those are wonderful things, and we plan on attending more of those. So keep those things up. Everything I hear is nothing but good about that, and it gets the, the residents to meet other residents. Uh, I agree with the property taxes. Um, you know, if they're doing things right, I don't have anything more to say about that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Escoto, do you have a rebuttal? No, I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. We're both in agreement. <laughs> and Mr. Samuelson, do you have a rebuttal? Uh, my only rebuttal is off topic like his last one was, <laughs> which has to do with the energy stuff, energy stuff. I think one of the things that needs to be done is, is to communicate better to the, to the residents about the energy situation. And they apparently publish some reports every quarter, and I think those should be provided to the, um, made, made available to people. And the, They've got to be better analyzed. I don't know that we can change what they do. Thank you. Uh, the last question that I have right now is, uh, where do you see, or Mr. Samuelson, where do you see opportunities to reduce the city budget? To reduce the city budget? Yep. I don't really have any idea, but that's kind of one of my areas of expertise. Now, I was told that that the staff is excellent and nobody needs to look at it, but I would beg to differ with that. I've got a strong capability of looking at financial statements and seeing where, where budgets are. I think we ought to be able to see what, what the budgeted items are and what the actuals are, and if there's variances, 
why are there variances instead of just making supple supplements to it? And I think some of the information needs to be put at a lower level. Now, if I was elected to a councilman, I would be able to see that lower level. I've looked at the stuff. I can identify variances. I looked at it so long ago, I don't remember where the question marks were. But there's a lot of question marks. Thank you. Mr. Escoto? I'm sorry, repeat the question, please. Sure. Uh, where do you see opportunities to reduce the city budget? Uh, overall, in unnecessary expenditures, I think is 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 something that they should be focused on. Um, I heard about an expenditure that that might be uh, uh, coming up uh, of so some equipment uh, purchases that have to be read redone because of a purchase of faulty equipment or uh, equipment that was not up to par. Uh, things like that, that uh, when you make the purchases, I think that, or rather when you sent out bid, bids for purchases, those things should be analyzed very, very uh, closely and scrutinized to make sure that, that whatever the, uh, the, the vendor is issuing to the city is uh, you know the the quality that we that we require? Uh, I think that th there is plenty of transparency with the budget. Uh, anybody can see the budget. Anybody who has a a, uh, a, a, a mind to analyze. Uh, mind you, I'm not an accountant, but I do see. Uh, I, I I know my gazintas, and <laughs> and. And I can and I can tell. I mean, I can, I can figure out whether something is wrong, whether it's not. And there's regularly uh, uh, there's regular audits that are being done uh, to the budget here in the city. Uh, so uh, I'm comfortable in knowing that the budget is being handled right. Uh, that uh, I'm not saying that don't look at it. I mean, it, it should be constantly be looked at. That's why it's published on the web page for you to look at or anybody to look at. Thank you. Mr. Samerson, your rebuttal. I have a, a, a rebuttal. How much time do I have? One minute. Huh? Okay. You have one minute. Um, well, one of the things I want to look at is we're, we're, we're spending 2.5, I think it's a million a year for the Metro Development District. Uh, and the financial statements that I saw said, Revenue 2.5 million, expenditures 2.5 million. I think there ought to be a low, lower level of detail of how that money's being spent, and that's probably an area. Well, I, I don't know that we can cut it because half of our sales tax is two per, two percent. 1.5 of that goes to the city, and a, a half a cent of that goes to that thing. So, but I think. I'm just going to stop there. I think there's some areas in the police department, as an example, they're budgeted, but they're not being spent. Um, so again, that's just looking. Thank you. Mr. Escoto? Uh, I don't have a rebuttal. Thank you. Uh, we'll be taking a short break so we can get some questions from the audience, and then we'll go and get those asked to you. Miss Debbie? I thought we were having water. Yeah, I would. I want one of those too. <laughs> how how many minutes did she say? How much time? I'm not sure. Debbie, how much time do we have? Someone went to get
uh, grade school, high school, college. But any rate, any rate, I learned I, I learned to try to smile at Apache in Houston. I don't do it enough. It's a good point. And you feel happier too. Thank you, Jennifer, or Jean, whoever came up with it. I see you there. <laughs> Are you Charlie? Yeah, well, that, I, I, I remember you were one of the nice people that came up and introduced yourself at Civic Club. Yeah, that's the only time I realized that I talked with you. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Been around here a while. Jennifer, Charlie's one of the councilmen. saying I should bring it up? Huh? I've had a big enough break. Let's go. I want to get it over with. Although it gives me an opportunity to work on my closing statement.
I'm okay. Do you have to? You don't have to work tomorrow, right? We get to sleep in. Oh, I thought that this would be a shorter break. I have a question, please. Are the questions going to be directed at an individual and they will be for both. Okay. Just like the format in so far. Okay. Ready. All right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Mr. Escoto, we'll be starting with you. Um, if elected, you'll be one member of a team, city council, city staff, city police, etc. How effective are you as a team player? I think I'm pretty effective as a team player. Uh, I, I spent 26 years of my life as a member of a very, very important team, the uh, United States Army. Uh, the United States Army is focused on team. It's all, it's all teamwork. Uh, and that's how I've lived my life as a member of a team. Thank you. Mr. Samuelson? Well, I think I'm good at teams. I might have not been in the earlier part of my career, but I've learned a lot in the last 50 years. Um, I've had teams that work for me. I've been on teams. Uh, I consider most people equal, and I look for their contributions and, and values. And I had a discussion with, with the mayor a couple, month or so ago and I said I wanted to be a part of his team and I said I would support him but I wouldn't be a yes man and I would try to add value to his team by pointing out other points of view and maybe even playing the devil's advocate once in a while. Thank you. Mr. Escoto, do you have a rebuttal? Yes, yeah, so when as a member of city council uh, uh, the team concept is that you're, you know, you're five members of, of, of a team to bring Shenandoah along. Uh, I will have my own opinion. I will uh, have my own reservations if I need to have them on, on issues that, that come up before the panel. Uh, but with one 
constant goal, and that is to be, that is, uh, what is Shenandoah? What is going to be better for Shenandoah? How is this going to be useful to Shenandoah? And I think everybody on that team has the same idea. Uh, how is this going to benefit Shenandoah? Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Samuelson, your rebuttal? Well, I want to add, as I've stated in some of my um, things that I've written, I want to represent, above all, the, the residents of Shenandoah. The residents of Shenandoah come first. If they elect me, then I'm representing them, and that comes first. Thank you. Mr. Samuelson, the next, next question is, do you have any thoughts on mass transit or renewable energy for Shenandoah? The uh, short answer is no. Um, I, I, the renewable energy, I, since you bring it up, it seems that that should be looked into. What was the other question, please? The other part of it? Just if you had any, any thoughts on mass transit. Uh, I think that there ought to be something available. It would be nice if there was something available for the residents to get around in Shenandoah, like something similar maybe to like the Woodlands have with their, with their trolley so that people could get around if they wanted to without driving a car. I, I don't know about mass transit, um, but mobility. Thank you. Mr. Escoto? As far as ma mass transit, uh, uh, I, I don't know how feasible it would be for Shenandoah. Uh, the population in Shenandoah that is uh, either, either locally employed or, or retired, uh, I don't know how mass transit would, would necessarily apply to Shenandoah. As far as uh, renewable energy, I think the trend is, is, is to, you know, to, you know, solar power and wind power and all that. I, I don't think that that, that, uh, that that would be applicable to, uh, to, to Shenandoah. Although it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not, I wouldn't discourage it, but I certainly would be willing to, to, to take a look at what is being proposed in those two uh, uh, areas. Thank you. Mr. Stamison, your rebuttal? Nothing. Mr. Escoto, do you have a rebuttal? No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Escoto, how would you deal with annexations and the ETJ? Well, presently, uh, properties that surround our, our, our city limits would have to be uh, asked, or rather, they would have to ask to be annexed uh, by Shenandoah. So in the present, I would, if anybody is interested in becoming part of Shenandoah, I would certainly encourage it, and I would certainly uh, uh, study it uh, to see the, uh, the benefit to Shenandoah of that uh, annexation. Uh, but I would, be, I would be willing to, to look at it. And uh, well, I'm sorry, the, you mentioned something about the ETJ? It, the question that I received was, how would you deal with annexations in the ETJ? Oh, the ETJ, well, I'm certainly uh, in the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, we are, we, uh, we just finished looking at uh, the possibility of uh, rezoning certain areas or, or planning to zone those areas that could possibly become of part of Shenandoah uh, to see what the, the, the best use of that land would be uh, if and when that time comes when uh, we become a large enough city to start annexing those, those areas. Thank you. Mr. Samuelson? Well, um, the, the, the extraterritorial jurisdiction stuff is pretty much um, taken care of as uh, Mr. Escado spoke. The annexation, um, you, you, have to be, you have to be, they have to want to be annexed in order to be annexed. Um, I hope someday that plot of land on Wellman that's owned by somebody else wants to be annexed, and then you, you deal with it prudently. That stretch that's 
down uh, Tamina Road that just recently got rezoned with, with, with the plan that Mr. Escado talked about. If somebody wants to be annexed, you, they're probably wanting better water and sewer. And so you got to make sure that they pay for what they get and that the burden is, is not added to us. And if, if somebody gets annexed and it's residential, they're, they're going from a high tax rate to our low tax rate. It, the, the pot is actually, our pot is, it has to be distributed over more people. So you gotta, you gotta watch that stuff. If somebody wanted to be annexed and it was a residential area, off the top of my head, that's probably to our detriment. Thank you. Mr. Escoto, do you have a rebuttal? Uh, no, I just, uh, I, I agree with, with Mr. Simonson. I, I only want to add, add that uh, the areas like uh, he, uh, he suggested, uh, Tamina Road, or any other area in, in Shenandoah that wants to come in and, and uh, uh, develop or redevelop a, a certain area, they would have to pay an impact fee. We actually studied it, deliberated that uh, the the issue of impact fees, and it was uh, and we agreed, uh, and the city agreed that uh, any new construction uh, of any sort would have to pay uh, an impact fee in order to uh, to uh, uh, compensate for the 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 need to build uh, water, uh, to connect water lines, sewage, uh, roadways, et cetera, so to offset the expense of the city. Thank you. Mr. Samuelson, your rebuttal? Nothing. Okay. The next question I have for you, Mr. Samuelson, is should the city provide incentives for residential renovations? How would you fund this? Well, um, off the top of my head, I've never heard of something like that. Um, in my in my earlier remarks, I would promote renovations and think and remodeling and make it easy for people to do that and not put barriers in their way. Of course, not let them do anything, but make it easier for people to to do that. Make it clear what what the rules and the processes are for doing that. I have heard there have been some people that wanted to remodel and they just said to H with it, this is too much trouble. So um, I don't know about the incentives, never heard of it. I, I guess somebody suggested it, it might be considered off the top of my head. No, they can pay for their own um, renovations and remodeling. Thank you. Mr. Escoto? Uh, no, I, I don't believe in, 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 in that type of an incentive. I think that uh, someone wants to renovate their home, it's, it's out of their pocket. Uh, uh, I, I do encourage it though, I, I will encourage it. I mean, uh, I, and, I, and I see a trend in Shenandoah. I've seen uh, a few houses uh, uh, right on Holly Hill, our former mayor uh, renovated his entire house and the house next door to his is being renovated. Uh, there's another one at the, almost at the end of Shenandoah Drive that was renovated, was completely gutted and, uh, and renovated. I, I, that's that's great. I'm glad to see that that type of of uh, of uh, uh, renovation because it increases the property property value and the value the value of the city. Uh, uh, but no, I don't I I, I don't believe in, in 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 doing that. Oh no. Thank you, Mr. Samuelson. Do you have a rebuttal? No. Uh, Mr. Escoto, do you have a rebuttal? No. Uh, the last question that we have selected from the audience questions is, since the city has approved three additional apartment complexes in the city, um, how will the city prepare for the additional traffic and increased population? Mr. Scotto, you're first. Uh, well, one of, uh, and I've received this question before uh, from, from a resident while I was walking. Uh, how is the traffic going to be dealt with uh, over at um, on uh, Six Pines and research when uh, when the, that resort is is being up uh, uh, when it's completed. Well, uh, I understand that 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 uh, I'm sorry. What is the name of that? Uh, 
escapes me. Lifetime, Lifetime Fitness, that's right. Uh, Lifetime Fitness, the corporation that runs that, has several uh, locations all over the country, and they have done those studies, those traffic impact studies, uh, and they, they did one for this particular location as well. And there is a plan to deal with that traffic, the expansion of, of our turn lanes, um, of both the uh, uh, east and west on, uh, on Six Pines, uh, also the, uh, the extension of, of Search to 45, all of that is going to be uh, impacted. All of that is going to be improved. Uh, so, uh, uh, as far as the other locations, uh, they have also done uh, impact uh, studies as far as uh, the traffic flow. Uh, I know that there's a, a there's a, a multi-residential uh, complex that's going to be built over there by. Um, um, on the, on the feeder road on the west side. And I know that they've dealt, and I've seen the plans for their traffic flow uh, uh, issues and how they're resolving it. Thank you. Mr. Samuelson? Well, I'm aware of, that there, of the concerns, particularly of that complex going up at Six Pines. Um, I don't have the answers. It sounds like it's already been studied. I think the, the first thing is the city needs to recognize it's an issue and come up with plans for, for dealing with it. With it. Um, the things that come to the top of my head already before Mr. Escado says them is, you know, turn, turn lanes. Um, um, maybe I, that's all I really know. I don't have the answer, okay? but. Uh, trust me, I know it's an issue and it needs to be appropriately addressed. And it sounds like there have already been studies and plans to address some of that that I'm not familiar with. Thank you. Mr. Escoto, do you have a rebuttal? Uh, no rebuttal, just an agreement that, yes, you know, studies have been made and there are plans in the work uh, to uh, alleviate some of that overflow on research. Uh, on 245 and the feeder road by adding uh, even a, a speed up lane on the feeder road going south uh, from that turn lane that I spoke of uh, earlier. Thank you. Mr. Samuelson, do you have a rebuttal? Nope. Okay. Um, at this time, I'd say that we can go ahead and move into our closing statements. Uh, Mr. Samuelson, you'll be up first. You have Wonderful. Two minutes. <laughs> uh, first of all, I, I honestly want to say that I wish both I and John Escado were not running at the same time. I think he's very qualified. Um, I can only speak for my qualifications. I want everyone to know that, that there is a, I'm going to be putting it on Facebook for tomorrow morning or this evening, the, the League of Women Voters has um, interviewed and gotten responses to some questions from each of us. Those are available to you, and you can go to vote411.org, and you type in your address, and what, what will pop up is this election, and you click on it, and you will see the responses that each of us has had made to the three questions the League of Women voters had done. That's more for the benefit of people who aren't here. You got to hear some of this stuff. Um, you know, M Mr. Escado has said he's good at problem solving. I believe that. I, I do want to read a couple of my, uh, of my qualifications for the benefit of some people. Um, if I were to describe my background in a few words, it would be practical management consultant. I think I'd be good at helping make appropriate decisions. I believe I'm smart, I have good common sense, and I'm open-minded. My favorite saying, which my bosses and peers now repeat, is I don't know what I don't know, okay? But I'm a fast learner. My bosses have said I'm a, an exceptional problem solver, can solve things that other people wouldn't even tackle, but he's qualified. So I got a lot of financial background. I've been a VP of finance. I've been a controller. I've designed... I was considered an expert in governmental accounting systems, so I know what I'm okay. doing. Thank you. And 
Mr. Rescato, your closing statement. Uh, first of all, I want to I want to thank everybody for being here and for for showing uh, interest in in both of our opinions and where we stand on on the future of, of Shenandoah. Uh, that's very important. I encourage everyone to go out and vote. Uh, uh, as everybody knows, when if everybody doesn't know, it's uh, uh, early voting starts uh, Monday through the 27th, and then election day on May 1st. Uh, any additional information about me can be found at uh, jscotto for Shenandoah.com and on the Facebook page. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the Facebook page. Uh, I believe that we both want what's best uh, with Shenandoah. It's up to you all to decide which one of us is in a better position to, uh, to, to do that, to see what is best for Shenandoah. Uh, again, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Samuelson, for participating. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for being here, and thank you for moderating. Yippee, skippy, happy, it's over. <laughs>